Greetings, I'm Chappers. And I'm the captain. And welcome to Anderton's here in Guildford, the heart of England. Well, not quite the heart. I would say more like the arse. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but it's nice. I like it here. Uh, yes, today uh, we've got some fantastic new guitars from Fender. Mm. Uh, the eagerly anticipated and new for 2016 uh, Elite Series. <laughs> remember the Deluxe series, don't you? I remember kind of, it well. Uh, so the Deluxe series is now just a distant memory as has sailed off into the sunset and has been replaced um, by an upgraded version called Elite. So just to put this kind of in, where does it fit in the range? Yes. You go all three, Esquire, Mexican, American Special, American Standard, and then this is kind of like top of the range. So American. this is like level up from American Standard. Absolutely. So it kind of sits... Once you go level up from American Standard, you, you can either go vintage and you can spend a few extra hundred pounds going sort of let's have an authentic 56 yeah. strap or something like that. Or you can go elite. So it's like let's let Fender kind of really, um, you know, what can you, what, how can you improve to iconic instruments? And this is where they've made a few really cool sort of common sense changes to the design and done some new things that seem really, really cool. guitar range, there's essentially uh, four basic guitars. There is <coughs> ye olde trusty three single coil Stratomacaster. American Elite Stone. Which we'll have a fiddle with in a minute. There is uh, like a, a rock version of that uh, with a humbucker um, and a blow switch, which Rob will tell you about in a minute. There's a sexy Telecaster. <laughs> in a tremendous colour. Lots of different colours on these. I'll, I'll put a link in the description below. Yeah, I've got to say, I think Fender have nailed the colours on yes, this range. Yes, they have. They are or, really pretty. Or perhaps our wonderful editor Rory will just sort of randomly chuck pictures of different colours over the screen now. And um, probably the, the, the coolest one, or certainly the, the one that wasn't available in the Deluxe series, is a thin line mm. Telecaster now, which is spectacular. I just noticed that really interesting bridge. Yeah, well, should we... Um, Let's go through some of the features that will will be on all of these guitars now. Um, the the sort of the daddy feature, mm. which we're going to do a comparison demo on, are the new N4 noises pickups. So as the name suggests, fourth generation pickup. However, the cool kind of thing is here. Whereas the first three generations were very much an evolution of the same technology, just improved every time. Mm. Uh, N4 is absolutely chuck all that out the window. Go and get a guitar with classic 50s pickups on it, like this sort of thang here, mm. and try and make a noiseless version of that. I um, think it's really cool that Fender would do that because there's so much heritage and history to kind of start something again from afresh and look at it with brand new eyes. Yeah. But of course, a company continually evolves and has new staff and new people, yeah. and it's kind of, I think it's just a great idea that they did yeah. that. And noiseless is even one of those things that just says, you know, Eric Johnson, for example. Uh, he wants all the noise. Eric Johnson thinks that the noise of a single <coughs> coil pickup is intrinsic to his sound. I think most people would, would, would probably 
disagree with Eric Johnson in that it's generally annoying. So if we if we put some gain on your amp sound, let's show the the people yeah, who don't know what we're talking coffee. about. How dare you interrupt? I'm sorry. So people who don't know what we're talking about, if you whack a load of distortion on your guitar sound, oh, you haven't got a. Plug this one in. All right. <laughs> I was well, just thinking, because it won't make any noise, will it? Well, yours? basically, I, I'm, my volume's full up right now, yeah. so this this is the noise with this On what guitar. pickup? Neck on pickup. the neck pickup, which is a single coil. So if we do the same on this guitar. So this is typically the sort of noise you get. Maybe it's... So you can kind of hear that buzz. Yes, it's irritating. It doesn't really matter whether you're on the neck pickup or the back pickup. It's just a bit brighter on It's a bit buzzy. So. <laughs> That's kind of what's annoying if you're playing with a gain, any real level of gain, particularly at volume. So we'll do some tonal comparisons between those later in the video. Um, but Fender claim that that you know that they've really nailed all of those unwanted kind of compression issues that you yeah. used to get with the previous version. And of, just in the uh, short jam and play around that I've had with this really lovely feeling guitar. I wouldn't say that the noiseless element takes anything away from the tone of the guitar at all. Apart from the noise. Apart from the noise, <laughs> yes. It removes the one thing it's supposed to do. Um, they've kind of upgraded the locking machine heads on Elite, so now the the posts that stick up are a little bit shorter than what was on the, the previous <coughs> Deluxe. So you've got a little bit more of a break angle over the nut, um, which is kind of cool because it just you know stops any sort of, of that unwanted string popping out the nut or anything like that. The neck has had a humongous um, change, so. The previous range had a compound radius fretboard going from like nine and a half inch down here up to 12, 12 uh -huh. inch up here. So, you know, pretty, you know, but the, the, the back of the neck stayed a constant C shape all the way up. That's another change, the, the profile as it goes yeah, up. Yeah, so they, they're not only have they made it flatter as you go up, so, so it goes from a nine and a half to a 14 inch uh -huh. uh, radius up here, but the neck starts, it goes from a, a C shape more to a D shape. So more, I guess it, you know, so you can get a bit Richie Cotson up here. It gets a bit more kind you of can maybe. Yeah, but Eric Gales down I mean, here. Wizardy up here, you know, and, yeah. and as you say, sort of Jimi Hendrix down here and uh, Steve Vai up here, yeah. or you know that kind of <laughs> that kind of vibe. And that's the same whether you do the Telecaster or the Stratocaster or whatever. It's more ergonomic to the hand, isn't it? That's the situation. Yeah, I've got a kind of. It's funny, really, because if I, I think if nobody told you. You yeah. just sort of go, oh, yeah, this guitar feels great. But yeah, you, yeah. when you actually do, you go, oh yeah, it is actually kind it's, of. But it's all these tiny, small details that add mm. up to make something that just you just pick it up and go, oh, it feels great. Yeah. For example, the little tiny rubber sleeves on the knobs. The first thing I, I felt, and I'm like, oh, just as a player on stage, that's such a nice feeling yeah. thing. That you only yeah. get on the strats because you just have your good old-fashioned metal knobs on the yeah. Telecaster. So the the heel joint's been. Uh, I would say evolved rather than redesigned. So the, the previous model oh, yeah. had like a square <clears throat> join, but with the corner kind of cut off. Uh, the new design now is, in fact, where I go, this camera here. Uh, the new design is now completely curved, and also the neck has been kind of curved just a little bit mm. away on the sort of the thin string <coughs> side of things up here. So Lovely rolled edges on the fretboard. Uh, they do just that so Generally, well. they feel great to play. They just feel, yeah. I mean, as you'd expect from a high end or relatively high end Fender guitar, they feel beautiful to play. is actually a little different to the to the bridge that's on the regular Telecaster. 
Um, the bridge on the thin line has been redesigned so that the back pickup now sits on its own sort of individual plates. You can kind of see a close up of this here. And the, the bridge is entirely separate and the only thing holding the bridge in place actually is the tension of the string. The will of love of the many people that love the guitar. Yeah, so if you can imagine that, like imagine my hand here is the bridge and this hand is the wood. <laughs> and that's it, like this, <laughs> like this. Uh, so the, essentially what happens is that, and then the strings of course are pulling it this way so it sits in place. And Fender say on, on this particular model, you know, it just gives a little bit more sort of string on wood kind of action, right. um, which, you know, should obviously affect the, the sort of the way the guitar vibrates and, okay. and uh, sustains and stuff like that. And so, yeah. Stunning looking guitar, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the word looks great. Mixture of uh, alder and ash bodies, depending on what finish you go for. So some of the some of the, the finishes that really show the grain off. And how much will of this be... is hollowed? You can see it's yeah. It's just it's like just got a center block, like yeah. a you know. Actually, I don't. Maybe yeah. it's not just a center block. I'm guessing kind of here downwards is is solid, and here sort of upwards is is. Um, is hollow, really light. I don't know what these are, like six or seven pounds, something yeah. like that, but really, really light. We've got a Fender person miming in the background. He's got a white face and he's literally doing this <laughs> as he goes. <laughs> so no, yes, apparently it's just this bit's hollow and this bit's solid. It's just fab, isn't it? I mean, this literally weighs nothing. This would be so comfy to kind of gig with. It's fly through um, the roof late. Well, should we give them some tones? There yeah. is something else that's really, really cool about What's particularly that? this guitar. Oh, this has got a, a, a load, a gamut a smorgasbord of tonal switching options, which are, are sort of quite confusing if you want to look at no, all of them. No, go for it. We're go not going to give you it. all of them because it would be crazy. But there are two switches. There's a switch here, which you can press. Yeah. And there's a switch here that you can press. And they do two different things. This one is sick. Yes. It takes all of the sound from the guitar and sends it out of this cable device into an amplifier. It wipes everything out, so even the volume doesn't work. So literally, if I engage my Fender amplifier, I'm using a supersonic, by the way. So I'm on my neck pickup. I'll turn the volume off, but I'll press this button. It gives me everything in the guitar straight out of the lead. Well, the, the humbucker. Yes, the not humbucker. All, yeah, not Everything from the humbucker straight out of the lead, irrespective of where I am. Yeah. So if I disengage it and I kind of back off, if I back off. Just did that, but it makes no difference at all. I want to talk and do that, but. So just to give you a comparison of the humbucker yeah. through all the circuitry versus... Put it, yeah, put it on a cleaner sound because it's quite hard. Well, I was going to do a bit of both for oh, you, okay. so just I'll give you a chord. Without the switch engaged, with the switch. It's, it's a bit more top end, isn't there? It's yeah, more, it's more present yeah. all over, so it gives you the illusion of being louder. It is yeah. also louder as well. Um, that's great. And then we've got the, what's called an S switch, it's not anymore, S1. it's an S1 mm -hmm. switch. And because it's HSS, which stands for humbucker, single core, single core, because actually quite a few people ask me that in the comment section below my hand. Really? Right here. Yeah, what does HSS stand for? It's a tool hire company in England, isn't it? Like is that? it? Yeah, HSS tool hire. <laughs> um, I don't know what it does all over the shop because there's so many different combinations. There's like 7,210 of them. But what I do know is that in the neck position, without the S1 switch, it's a neck pickup clip. <laughs> But if you pop in the little switch, like that, it's, that's the noise it makes too. It's both of these pickups combined on the HSS guitar. With a bit of gain, it sounds like this. So this is it in.
essentially, I'll put a link in the description below where you can find out about more of these guitars. And there is a diagram actually that shows you what the S1 switching does on each guitar because it's yeah, it what is, is slightly you get different. one thing like this, and then right. you, the other one goes in there, <laughs> and then the tone is superior. So yeah, the, I mean, I think the three si do it again. Then, come on. Uh, the three single coil one uh, is the is the one that lets you have all three single coils together with S1 switching. The other uh, S1 switch that I like, what it does is that typically when you have your two pickups together, yeah, um, without S1 switching, they're wired in parallel, oh, and like it gives that. you a certain yeah, it gives you a certain type of characteristic of sound. Uh, if you hit S1 in, they're then wired in series. So okay, uh, let's listen to the difference yeah. between that. So here's parallel. And it's serious. Yeah, big different. So, so the way they're wired when you hit the S1 in is more akin to being like a humbucker than two mm. single coils kind of working almost That's separately. great. But there are five different versions of that. You know, I think, you know, you find that some of the tones are a bit eclectic, but you know, you find the, the tones that you like. You get the same basic vibe on, on the, the Telecaster with the two pickups in the middle wire. Give me some tonage then, Leach. Or series. Um, sure. Uh, so this is, we'll do the same with the solid body one as well, but you know, this is your, this is your Telecaster. I quite like the, the, the semi-hollow one because typically the bridge pickup on a solid Telecaster is a bit like, oh, you know kind of cool if you're in like, a band. But. That sounds like the ultimate combination of innovation, materials and design. Where did, <laughs> you do this to me all the time. <laughs> like, I think, God, that's genius, Ron. And then I realise I've got a sticker on my guitar telling him. If we, if we S1 it, you know, the middle position I think is the most obvious. I've got this killer little overdrive pedal on the floor here. I, I really like that drive pedal in relation with this amplifier and this guitar. Yes, I like I do your too. trifecta of tone. My terror. trifecta of tone. Anyway. Onwards and upwards. Can we change guitars? Can I have a go on the other strat then? Uh, no. Why not? You're having a go on that and I'm having a go on oh, that. Right That's then. the whole point. So we've quickly swapped over now. So I've got the regular three single coil strat uh, and Rob has got the regular American tele, elite, uh, elite series tele. telecaster. I don't so, know why I went American then and kind of stereotypical American. <laughs> it was a bit silly really. Well, it's but it is made in America. It is made in America. In Proudly so. Sunny California. And it feels fantastic. So a couple of bits of the detail that we promised you that we would go into. We're going to compare now uh, how close does the sing noise of single coil on this guitar sound to a genuine, actually this is custom shop rather than genuine, but it's got 50s, classic 50s single coil pickups yeah. in them. Um, did we miss any detail, do you think, as we were talking to people? Well, tell me about your butt adjust. My butt adjust, yes. Uh, the, um, I'm kind of, you know, feel free to, to, to uh, snigger like a naughty schoolboy at the back of the classroom about what Fender have decided to call this. You may have noticed uh, on the new Elite Series, they've moved the truss rod adjustment from a, uh, you know, nut uh, hole. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's getting worse. Uh, to a hole just behind the nut, uh, to uh, a, a sort of a cut out part yeah, of it's the It's a really practical solution because yeah. it's such a difficult thing to fiddle around up here. Yeah. It's much you, need, you need a specific size uh, Allen key to do that, whereas this kind of any anything, like a little small screwdriver or an Allen key that fits in that hole will adjust it. It's a biflex truss rod, which kind of means it's got the ability to kind of go curvy or yeah, so if you, if you stick your thing in and push it away it's from you, the neck will straighten out. And if you stick it in and put it towards convexy. you, it'll, it'll convex it. Yes. yes, that's what I was thinking. What's the opposite of it's convex and concave? Yes, it is. Is well, what then. a biflex um, truss rod can do. Now, if you've never had a biflex truss rod, be careful, because normally what happens on a standard truss rod is it can only really pull the neck this way, sorry, this way, 
that way and the strings pull it this way. And so what you would essentially do on a normal truss rod is as your neck is being pulled this way by the strings is you would tighten the truss rod to pull it back this way. Yeah. On a biflex one, what happens is, is as you get, you know, in its sort of center position, the truss rod isn't really sort of doing anything. And then as you turn it one way, it's gonna go this way. And as you turn it the other way, it's gonna go that way. So if you don't really know what you're doing on a biflex, or if you think that you've got a normal truss rod and you've actually got a biflex truss rod, you can very quickly find that you're turning it to the point where the neck's going in the opposite direction that you want it to go in. And if you're not sure how to adjust the yes. truss and why, Here's a really quick test that you can do that loads of people don't seem to know about, mm -hmm. which I think is really useful. All you do is you pick a string in the middle, maybe the G string. I do all of my strings, but we'll start with the G string. And fret it down at the first fret. Mm -hmm. Lee, you can do this at the same time. I will. Then you can take your thumb on the other hand, <laughs> and you can press down after the last fret on the fretboard. After the last yes. fret. Yes, and then take okay. your first finger on the same hand, look at me, Yeah. and just dab it on the top of the string over the 12th fret, and it should just bounce over oh, that yeah, string, it's got a little bit of just about half a mil to yeah, a mil. Like, yeah, I agree. That is how much relief is in the neck that you want to play with. If the string is just dead touching the fret, the neck is too straight or slightly too far that way. Yeah. And you would want to relieve it and bring it back towards you. If there is maybe, you know, two mil bounce in that string before it touches the 12th fret, then it's an awful lot too much relief and you want to slightly strain mm. the neck. You can also touch the 12th and just bounce it over the middle. But I always like to give each string a little dab, I've dab, seen touch. you doing that a few times before, and I wonder That's what, what you're I'm doing. doing there. And what you'll sometimes notice to test if a neck is twisted or not is if you do it over the E string and it's way loads and loads of relief, and then over this one it's no relief at all, your neck is it's a little twisted. bit twisty, twisty. Yes, which is more of a problem because, you know, adjusting the neck, you know, with a truss rod is normal. It doesn't matter if you've got a cheap guitar or an expensive guitar, necks need a little bit of adjustment from time to time. If it's twisted, that is definitely time to take it to a I should also tech. say, disclaimer, everyone has a certain feel, and some people like a guitar setup with just the tiniest amount of relief, or mm. it's even touching occasionally, that's how they have it, and the action is really high and it just works for them. I'm some always... people like loads of relief, like Jeff Beck likes a lot of relief and quite oh, high really? action. So mm. it's it's a feel type vibe as well. So there you are, here ends the lesson of uh, trust roddedness. Um, you might like as well, like, again, Fender love these little tiny sort of details. If you buy an Elite Strat or Telecaster with a maple neck, you will get uh, a sort of a, looks like a brassy colored kind of butt nut. Uh, and if you buy one with a rosewood neck, you will get a black butt nut. Right. So, you know, uh, these, the color of your butt nut is incredibly important. If it's you like a ranking Fender. system. You know, you go <laughs> silver, gold, and black. I like that. Lordy, right, let's do this. Um, so, does it sound like a 50s Strat, I think, is the question that we want to ask. So. Step up the DR1, bro. And now? So clean first. Yeah. All the tone and volume up. To come out. If, if anything, if anything, this guitar is darker sounding, which surprised me really because the criticism, I suppose, of noiseless interesting. In the past I felt is, it was brighter sounding. Really? Yes. How funny how people. We should point out things. that's a custom shot. Yeah, it's it's a custom shot <coughs> guitar with a you know very different bridge on it and all. So, I I guess what we're sort of saying is, let's not necessarily try and use this as a scientific sort of experiment of does that sound the same as this guitar because there's lots of components on here that are different. It's more a question of does this sound in any way sort of artificially squashed and compressed that perhaps people may have. Um, uh, criticised previous noiseless pickups for, or did it just sound like a great sounding old Strat? Which mm -hmm. I think it did, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I reckon I, it's all to do with the tone. I, I've, I've, got to, I've got to be honest with you, one of my favourite old guitars is still, the, uh, you know, the first generation of Eric Clapton um, signature Strats, which had Fender Lay sensor pickups on them, which were arguably the least single coil sounding pickup that 
was ever made for a noiseless. So there you go. Uh, you, you will have to make your own mind up about that by going to your local guitar shop and trying a, a, an elite strat yourself. Um, Lee, can I have a go on that strat? Why are you so obsessed with stealing it my looks, guitar? It looks really awesome. I know. Awesome. Well, as long as I can have it back for the jam. Let's play, check right. it through your, the, the, the tones on your Telecaster. Okay, well, I've got less tones. Yes. But still lots of tones. Because I still have an S1 switch here in my volume knob. Uh, it is called an S1 switch. On it the is indeed. Yes, it is indeed. So here is a pickup. <laughs> It's a stiff lever. <laughs> Middle position. It's a pokey beast. Mm. Here's the neck position. It's much more telecastery than I think the thin line is. Yes. The thin line's got, I don't know, it Do you hasn't, know it I think hasn't that got is? that punch in the face thing that Do you know why I think has. that is? Why? It's because this is a solid body. Well, a solid body and a different bridge system. Yes. So, um, I'd say that's what it is. Here's can we hear, hear the in between sound with S1? Because okay. that's quite a big difference. Right, on, so on here's without S1 in the middle. Yeah. Here's with S1. With a bit of ganache. Absolutely. Here's without in yeah. the middle position. Reminds me of every band I was in up until I joined Dorje. Oh, really? I used to tell you for almost everything. Yeah. I recorded in Abbey Road that riff using a telly with an S1 switch. Telecaster? I oh, know, uh, a deluxe? Yeah, with, with the S1 switch in that position. It sounds great. Okay, so here's a neck pickup on its own. And if I hit the S1 switch in, it's all three pickups. Which, ironically, always, when I first heard that on S1, it, it sort of goes, well, that's probably why when they originally designed the Strat, they decided that one of the settings wouldn't be all three pickups. Because yeah, I kind of yeah. think, if you sort of said, There's five really amazing sounds. Yeah, yeah. And I would say, that's like not really one that I would kind of leap for. So if I had, you know, you can understand if you've only got five sounds, that, that sure. would have probably been in sixth place, wouldn't yeah, it, yeah, yeah. all three. But it always amazed, I, I remember, I, I quite commonly get asked in the store, you know, like, how, how do I wire my strap to get all three pickups running at the same time? Right, and, it, right. and there's a bit like, why, why would you want to? You know, it's like, I don't think, I don't think it's a, well, to be honest, if you want humbuckers, don't sound. buy a three single chord. Well, that's you can get your humbucker sound with S1, you know. That's all about wiring these two pickups or these two pickups just differently, you know. Yeah. Like, you can go from that classic Fender. That really quacky kind of, I know we call it an out of phase sound, I know it isn't out of phase, but whatever. Um, into, there's your humbucker. Nice. 
Nice. It's a great guitar. It's a great guitar. I know you oh. want to try it, so go on. Don't cross the streams. I've made it out of tune Lee. for you. You see, my vibrato is so unbelievably good that I can play chords on an out of tune guitar and just using the power of my mind, vibrato the strings back into being in in tune. Can we, we need a sarcasm flag for people that didn't realise that was sarcasm. Really. It wasn't sarcasm. I was <laughs> Versatile guitar, it's the strat, great. isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a great like, guitar. You know, I love my Les Pauls and all that kind of stuff, but you know, you can just do everything on this. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, jam out. Do you want this guitar back, or are you going to force no, no. me to play it? No, no. This, this will suffice for now. Fine. <laughs> uh, Uh, one last thing to show you, anybody lucky enough to be purchasing one of these will well, get this case. fabulous looking guitar case. Um, don't know what it's made of, some sort of ABS plastic. It's got the super duper chunky locks with the Swiss guard thing on it. Uh, they look great inside too. Fender say that this line here is actually a Stratocaster sort of shape. So, and these bits here, for those of you lucky enough to own like six of these, means they you stack. can stack your cases yeah. as well. Uh, I actually look, quite enjoy that. It's very pretty inside. Oh, and they're, nice. like, they're good to you. You get leather... Wait, 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 wait. You've got to angle it a oh, bit because they're not going to get the goodness. Yeah, the goodness they get, you get like a leather strap and a nice cable and some strap locks and, and a manual. and some, More importantly, they get the case keys. smell. Case smell. Case smell. Yeah. So that's nice. Um, so there you go. That's our little elite rundown, which is probably a long elite rundown. What was the price on this one? 
Everything in this range is kind of 14, 1500 pounds. It's actually not that dissimilar to what the old deluxe range used to be, just a, like, you know, normal inflationary kind of elite. rises. It's more elite, yeah, yes. There you go. So yes, if you'd like to look down on the uh, working classes, <laughs> um, consider yourself an elite guitar player, <coughs> clearly you need uh, one of these new wonderful guitars from the wonderful people at Fender. Well, you know what? You've been Lee Anderson. And you've been Rob Chapman. Take it easy. Shot, sir. <laughs> <laughs>